You like the cool background? We are live in an undisclosed location in a 70s retro Airbnb somewhere in Arkansas. And man, did we have a day today. We're not just going to be talking about the eclipse. we got breaking news happening all over the world. Share this podcast. Load it up. Let's make this the biggest big picture we've ever had. Live from Arkansas. Special edition. The Great American Eclipse Day. Let's go. All right, I can see the live chat filling up already. If you hadn't already done it, smash the like button, smash it, smash it, smash it. Come on, let's fill it up, fill it up, fill it up. We're going to welcome in the queen right now. She's coming in right now. Show some love for the Hello, queen. Hello, everybody. Yeah. She's... Woo! We are live from Arkansas. Yeah, baby. It's great to be here. It's great to be here. Uh, let's just go right off the bat. Let's just let everybody know right now. Uh, you know, if you didn't know already, most of you already know in our Big Picture family, you are recovering mm. from a full knee replacement. Uh, so, uh, it's been a tough, tough thing. I mean, it's a six, about a six and a half hour drive out here. <laughs> and, uh, and then there was a se several hour round trip to where we went to see the yes. eclipse today. So she's struggling y'all. She is, she is fighting for you, for the big picture family. <laughs> and, uh, so what, what about today? What did you, what did, what did you think about today? Today was amazing. Bring this up. I am very, very thankful for the opportunity to be here, to have witnessed this in, Arkansas, where we had totality, and it was just indescribable. Yes. And what made it more amazing is to be with so many friends and kind-hearted people who hosted us. Yes. And were so kind to us to let us come and um, have this experience with them. They fed us. Yes. Just good, kind-hearted Christian people, and yes. it just made the experience so much more. It was. It was incredible. I mean, good so food, amazing. the perfect location, the yeah. weather was amazing. Could not have been any better, y'all. It, it was beautiful. We could not have gone anywhere in the country and had a better experience. No. And speaking totally. of experience, now now these are amateur photographers, okay? These are some of these are teenagers and kids that took these pictures on their phones. You wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know they it. Did but, a great job. but look at this. This is when it started. Mm -hmm. This was the pictures I think taken from the telescope they had set up out there. Notice the big sunspot and all this. This was right, right. before it started. Right. And uh, if you were not able to watch our show today or watch it, this is when it began. And remember the show that I did about the eclipse, about the rolling of the stone? Mm -hmm. I mean, think about this. Does it not sort of remind yes. you of a rolling stone covering the tomb? And uh, so so we saw that, Sandy. And if we didn't already say that, um, some folks are saying they enjoyed watching the eclipse experience with us. We enjoyed having you there with us as well. I'm sorry I didn't say that already. Yes. But that was just another wonderful layer of knowing the Big Picture family was there, those who were live, those who are going to be watching an archive. I mean, it was just so it was, cool. It was amazing. We had people literally watching from every corner of the world, all over the world. live. Yeah. And all the people that was with us, they were so excited to hear right. us just throwing out names. You know what? I, I I have been working nonstop since we got back here for our makeshift studio. You love our our background here. This is seventies actual original seventies real wood original. paneling, and uh, yes. we're we're staying in an Airbnb here that that I think what they did, and we're very thankful for it. It's, oh, yeah. it's really nice. I think what they did is they just had a really dated house, and and it was looked just like the seventies, and they mm -hmm. just said, hey, let's roll with this. And uh, wow. so they decorated it, and it's like, you oh, know, yeah. going back in the 70s when we were kids. But it's really, really cool. We are actually just found a corner and stuck up our little studio here. <laughs> but uh, today, Sandy, was amazing to have our Big yes. Picture family yes. out there with us. And if you're new to our channel, welcome to the Big Picture family. This is yeah. a family. I mean, when you got people from every continent, I think, except Antarctica, woke themselves up and watched it live with us. And what oh. I was saying, and I got off on a rabbit trail there, is... I didn't have time to put the link to the actual live stream show yeah. today, but I will as soon as the program is over with. You'll be able to just go right down there if you missed it today and direct clink. Right. But but watch this little. Um, I love this little time lapse here that one of the guys that was with us set up on his phone. You can watch yes. it get dark. Watch how fast it gets yes. dark. Now of course this is sped up, but you'll see it's bright shiny sun. Boom, and that that was right at right before totality. And and what about the way the temperature dropped? Oh, I yeah. mean. It dropped, what do you think it dropped? Maybe 15 degrees, 10, 10 at least. At least 10. And if you guys out there watching had the same experience where it got cooler, yeah. you noticed the temperature drop, 
uh, say something in chat. Let us know. Yeah, Overcomer 08, they were spraying this, the sky like crazy they today. They had probably started before dawn. Yeah. Oh, it was Definitely when we left uh, where we're staying to go to where we viewed the eclipse, it so much. It was it was X's so everywhere. Trails. I mean, it was just insane what yes. they were trying to hide. But now we're not going. This show's not all about the eclipse. We got all kinds of news we're about to get to. So stay with us. But we just want to real quickly show you if you didn't get a chance to see totality, or you mm -hmm. didn't get a chance to see our show yet, and our show didn't really do it justice because my camera. I'm just going to tell you right now, my camera. I put the filter on it, but it just. It was not designed for that, okay? Nope. That these guys had some really good filters and good cameras. But this is the best example I can show you of what happens with totality. So you got the glasses on, and even when it's just a little minuscule, you still can't see it. But it's something, they call it the diamond. Yeah. And, and when that little flash of like, almost like a diamond happens, boom, you take the glasses off, and then this is what you see. Now, now this is, like I said, this was taken on a phone. And it is it's a it's a black circle, and then you see the corona, the white, the corona that we don't normally ever see from the sun because it's so bright, uh, is coming through. Now you can see some hints around it of the solar flares, but look at this picture here. Oh yes, this picture was taken, I believe, by the telescope that they had set up out there. You can literally see the corona. This this is not from the web. We didn't we didn't search this and download it. This was where we were at, and this was from the telescope where we had there. Yeah. So you see the corona, and then you actually see the activity of the sun. The the t what we talked about coming, the towers, the spiraling yeah. towers of fire coming yes. around. We actually got to see that. Look at that. Is that not incredible? Uh, it is. It was just mind boggling, Sandy. So it good. was it was so mind boggling. So let's let's watch this little video here. And, uh, and then I want to show you, I want to tell you that I'm going to show you this is, this is live from Indianapolis today. They were in the Indianapolis uh, Super Speedway, right. and they sh they're going to show you their version of it. But I want you to make sure you stay to the end of the program because I've got a special treat for you after all the news that we're about to cover right now. Uh, at the end of the program, after we get through with Uncle Jimmy and Super, uh, Supernatural AI Update, we're going to show you something that I've never seen before. I'm sure some of you may have seen video of it. But today, the astronauts in space filmed the eclipse from space looking at Earth. And it is crazy, oh, y'all. And, yeah. and that's going to be at the end. So, but let's watch this first here. This was NASA's broadcast from the Indianapolis Super Speedway. It is beautiful. We're just seeing a really small crescent, but the light all around us it's so dusky and I'm it's just odd. It is. I'm feeling a temperature drop already, which I can't believe. It's feeling cooler. The crowd is starting to go. Oh, this is right oh, before what it looks like right here before totality. Go, here yeah. we go. Getting All close. right. We are so All right. close. And the best soundtrack you could possibly <laughs> ask for in the background here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, we're so. Yes, thank you, Matt Carroll. Okay, just a little bit left, and you can really hear the crowd oh, changing. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. There we go. We're so right, close. Here, here comes the diamond. Almost. Almost. There. We are so, so close. And we Boom. Are, oh my gosh, there's that great diamond right here. there. All right. Oh, wow. Look at that. Totality. 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 Unbelievable. I'm <laughs> getting chills again. Wow. 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 Look at that. Fantastic. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. Oh that my gosh. Absolutely. Had to be there. Incredible Amazing. sight. And dark. <laughs> wow. Wow. Look at my goodness. Now, now, when it goes like that, it is, it goes completely dark. The birds start, they're quiet. The crickets start chirping. Right. They think it is night. Mm -hmm. Not only lasted about four and a half minutes, but you can you imagine? You take off your glasses, yeah. and for the first time in your life, maybe second time, possibly third time in your life ever, if you've ever seen a total eclipse in totality, you can literally look straight at the sun with the naked eye with no damage to your eyes. Yep. And that is what it looked like right there. Yes. Wow, wow, it wow. It was awe-inspiring.
Yeah, the street lights came on. I was looking at a tower that had been flashing with a white light. That turned to red, started flashing red. You could hear the crickets. Um, I mean, there's just nothing else like it. You, you have to experience this at least once in your life. Absolutely. And and by the way, it's 20 more years. 20 more years. <laughs> yeah. You know, if, if some, some of you guys were like, ah, it's no big deal. It's no. just, it's just, no, you got 20 years to wait. And it's a years. big deal. Start planning now. <laughs> it's a big deal. All right. So, Sam, let's get in some news tonight. Um, you know, a lot of stuff going on. Yes. Now, before I get into this, let me, let me go back and say one more thing. Let me just, let me just wax a little bit here. The title of the show is, is, is that something shifted today. Yes. And, and, and I believe, Sandy, that it is not just that there was a celestial sign that happened. It no. was amazing. But I believe that it was a sign. Remember, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, Genesis 1.14 says that he set the sun and the moon, God set the sun and the moon and the stars in the sky yeah. before he ever said for, to light the world for signs and for seasons. Yes, he did. There's no doubt in my mind. I know this is a natural phenomenon. I know this is a this is can be predicted. I think NASA has a calendar for eclipses all the way up to the year 3000. You know, so we know when eclipses are going to happen. Yes. That doesn't change the fact that that our sun is 400 times larger exactly than our moon yes. and is 400 times further away than the moon is from the earth. Yep. To enable this planet and only this planet, even atheist scientists will say, only this planet right. in all of the our entire solar system to even be able to have a solar eclipse, period. True. And we are the only one that can see it. And then you have that the Bible says the sign. So I believe <clears throat> we're going to see a different world. I believe that, that we are, not because of an eclipse, but I believe this was a sign in mm -hmm. the heavens of the season that we're in. So you believe it was a harbinger? I believe, that's right. I believe it was a harbinger. I believe it was a sign in the heavens by God to prepare us for what is coming, good and bad. I believe that. And don't you know that certain groups of people probably have been waiting on this to Absolutely. take advantage, to harness yes. certain energies so that they can perform certain rituals or do certain acts or set into motion certain things that they want to do and see accomplished. So I totally can line up with what you're saying about this being a harbinger. Yeah. I'm curious to know if anyone was able to see the Devil Comet, if there are any pictures, yeah. any videos yeah. from anybody. Um, I haven't seen anything yet. And there's also crazy talk, and I don't think that there's any validity to this, or at least I hope there's not, about an eclipse sickness. Some people, not many, well, are reporting that. that they became sick after hmm. the eclipse. Okay. Um, hopefully there's really nothing to that, but I was really, really hoping to see that comment. <laughs> yeah, we were trying our best. Now, I will say this. I went back and read some of the comments from our show earlier, and a few people said they did see it. So we oh, really wow. want to know that even if you commented there, comment in the live chat, but Please. especially comment down below in case something happens to the live chat. We want to know if you saw the red comment. Totally. So, so yeah, I believe something shifted, and I believe one of the things that you're about to see escalate is what is happening in Israel. Come on. And, and we did see escalation this week already, and the title of this article is Escalation. Iran vows imminent attack after Israel strikes consulate and kills high-ranking general. The world is on alert and waits to see what Iran will do after one of their consulates was attacked in Damascus by the Israeli Defense Force on Monday, April 1st, which led to the death of top Iranian commander Mohammad Reza Zahidi, among others. And uh, you can see here, let's just play this clip. So this is the destruction of the targeted attack that Israel uh, brought forth uh, the other day. Now, now Iran is vowing retaliation. Uh, it says that though not injured, Iranian ambassador to Syria, who's Hossein Akbari, said at least five people perished in the attack and that Iran's answer would be harsh. The Iranian embassy in Lebanon stated that the barbaric Israeli aggression is flagrant violation of international laws since the Israeli and its allies are waiting on a very likely attack from Iran, they were ex escalating that as well. 
And then something very strange happened. Uh, while this is going on, Israel began to withdraw all of their troops except one battalion from Gaza. Yep. Only one brigade remains in the Strip. So we have this attack, and then we have Israel pulling back from Gaza. The Israeli Defense Forces have withdrawn all ground crew, troops from southern Gaza Strip, with only one brigade remaining in the coastal enclave, according to reports on Sunday. This comes after four months of fighting in the former Hamas stronghold right. of Khan Yunis and six <clears throat> months since the start of the war. Now, Sandy, uh, you and I both have, we watch, um, I'm having a brain freeze, our, our guy from Israel. Um, Amir Safadi. Amir Safadi. And, and, and one of the things that he said was, do not believe, the, do not believe, I heard him say this, when people say that Israel is the war is winding down, he said they are. It is not. They have they have accomplished what they're going to accomplish to this point, but they are preparing for war with Hezbollah sure. in the northern area of Israel, and they are also preparing for the the expected retaliation from Iran. What are you hearing? And what is your gut feeling on it? So the only thing that I've really seen is probably a day ago. They were thinking something would happen within 48 hours. Um, you know, I don't know how much intel or what, how much word we would get out. I, I would think they would try to keep that under wraps of anything that they really were going to do. But it could, it's kind of a wait and see for us. And we yeah. definitely need to be praying yeah. for Israel and for the efforts that they have going. And then while all this is going, you know, our president, President Biden, issued an ultimatum that if they did not get out of Rafa and not start, basically told them, do not start any kind of war in Rafa. If you do, for the first time in the history of our country on this level, I know that we've held back things before, but they said even the current shipments that are already allotted, being loaded on the on on the whatever is distributing and taking them to Israel, yeah. we will stop them, and and we will pull back our aid. I'm telling you, it's it's scary to me. Um, the language from our country, from our leaders, yes, gets harsher. Yeah, yeah, and harsher. Yeah, it does. And, and they're not saying what they really want to say. No, but they are slowly ramping it up, little by little. Yeah, the statements and the at least what they look like they want to be doing, just yeah. you know, the countenance, the facial expressions, the it's just, you can see that they're setting up a scenario to let the rest of the world know no longer yeah. is our relationship going to be as yeah. it's been in the past. Yeah, and, and you know, we talked about, we led the show with saying that we believe something shifted Yes, with, with this sign in the heavens. And uh, right. if I'm not mistaken, Ramadan ends either tomorrow or the day mm -hmm. after tomorrow. It's like this week. So, so they are, you know, fasting and and uh, and preparing for Ramadan. Right. And so if that's the case, you know, a lot of people believe that as soon as Ramadan winds down, something significant is going to happen. And uh, so, but now, now talking about the United States, this right here is just, I can't even believe I'm reading this headline. Right. But the United States has said that- This is exactly what I'm talking about yeah. with the posturing and the language. When have you ever, when did you ever think you would see this? Yeah, everybody's saying tomorrow is, is the last day of Ramadan. Okay, so I thought that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, live chat. You guys are the most educated uh, live chat out there. Uh, but look what the United States says, quote, we will not interfere if Iran attacks Israel. Uh, the U.S. will not interfere if Iran attacks Israel through a series of messages exchanged via third parties. The United States and Iran have come to an understanding. Iran assured the Americans it will not target U.S. facilities, and in turn, the U.S. says it will not get involved if Iran retaliates against Israel. Israel carried out the attack on the Iranian embassy in Damascus without consulting the United States. Since the embassy and the next-door ambassador's residence are on the same compound which was bombed, they are both Iran's sovereign territory. Israel's attack was therefore an actual act of war for which Iran had the right, has the right to return with military force if they so choose. But you know what? Israel has always had the knowledge of knowing that America has their back. And yes. America said this week, we will not have your back if something happens. 
And one of the things that Amir Safadi played on his private telegram, and I, I, I suggest everyone yeah. join his telegram because he says things on telegram that he, he cannot does. say on other platforms. He does. And shows things that he can't, uh, will be censored. One of the things he showed was a, and you can go back and see it for yourself, was a clip of an Iranian news show where an Iranian um, specialist in the military was being interviewed by this person. And this is what he said. I literally heard this with my own ears. He said, our number one en enemy is not Israel, it's America. And he said, we know that we can't attack America, even though we want to attack America. America is multiple continents away. We do not have the ability to attack them. But we understand the way we attack America is we attack Israel. And so when we attack Israel, we understand it's an attack on America. But then America comes back this week and says, no, it's not anymore. It used to be, but it's not anymore. So basically telling Israel that it, Iran is saying openly, we've always known the deterrent from us wiping you out was America. Because we knew if we attacked you, then we had to deal with America. Well, America come back this week and said, nope. And, and then this is something else he said, Sandy. Amir said this that his intelligence on the ground, he has people living in Syria, yes. said that they personally witnessed and know people that or attest to this fact that multiple uh, suicide drones have arrived from Iran in Syria. So the plan is initially, instead of Iran firing missiles into Israel, they're going to attack from Syria, but it's actually going to be Iran. I'm telling you the Israeli war is about to go to another level. Well, we've been doing these proxy type things for a while now. We're yep. looking at six months. Right. Yesterday was exactly six months, right, since this yeah, war started? I think so. Look at all that we've already seen happen. Yeah. And Iran has far has far reach. Yes. I mean, they're everywhere. They're funding all of these different groups. And so to hear that some type of attack like this is in the works, it should not be a surprise. No, it shouldn't. And, you know, it's like, do y'all remember that there's a war going on in Ukraine? Oh, yeah, that. Do y'all remember that we've given over $100 billion, probably much more than that, from America mm -hmm. and the United Kingdom, the European Union, people all over the world have given billions and billions of dollars. And still it goes on. And what, but look, yet, yeah, look, look at this. Where, where is any kind of report? I mean, yeah, you yeah. rarely, like you say, hear anything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, look what we've already shown you. Videos of Israel. Videos of bombings in Syria. I mean, we can show you real-time attacks all the time. And, and whether you want to believe the numbers or not, you have a Palestinian number of, right. of, of dead. You have Israelis saying, no, we have a constant number. You don't get those numbers from Ukraine. You no. do not get anything from Ukraine. It is like this shadow war that is happening that is, I'm, I'm not doubting that it's a war. I'm not doubting that many, many tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, have lost their lives. Because, But you don't know what to believe when you hear those kind of numbers because exactly. nobody's talking about it. And then you got Zelensky coming out this week. It's like he feels like he's got the, they've given him permission to say anything he wants to any country. He basically says, warns the United States Congress, you need to meet our Ukrainian military aid demands or Russia wins. In other words, says, listen, you either give us the money, quit arguing, or you will have to deal with the fact that Russia wins. Kiev will lose the war against Russia if the U.S. fails to approve military aid to battle Moscow's invasion, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said Sunday. Tens of billions of dollars in military assistance for Kiev has been blocked for months in Congress. The package faces resistance from House Republicans. Quote, it is necessary to specifically tell Congress that if Congress does not help Ukraine, Ukraine will lose the war. Zelensky said it will be difficult for Ukraine to stay or survive without the latest aid on top, listen to this number, of an estimated $113 billion already sent at the cost of $900 per American household. Wow. $900 per American household. Well, can I just tell you something? When you drive that home, $900 is still a lot of money. I don't care who you are, still a lot of money. But then you take $900 and you go to every single family yeah. that is in America, and that's what exactly. we've sent Ukraine. How much per American 
Did we send Maui when the fires happened? Did we Very send East Palestine, Ohio, when that happened? How much are we about to put into this bridge? And then how much are we giving to or helping with our our veterans who are living homeless on the streets? Mm -mm. Sandy, I'm getting fired up. Yeah, you're already getting fired up, and you should. Uh, when I think about the veterans, the elderly, the single moms, every group who is in so much need, and um, Belinsky, he started out, you know, not as demanding as he is now. He, like you said, he has become emboldened. Yeah. He started with his hand out, and now it's like he's slamming the table with his fist, yeah. demanding that this country send more funds, send probably more new missions, uh, munitions, um, probably if he could get away with it, send more of our own troops. Yeah, and, and let's not forget. And send them to the front lines. And let's not forget that this week, the our defense secretary admitted and said openly, they are coming in NATO. Yeah. They are coming. Not that there's, you know, used to we would say, you know, we're, we're thinking about it, we're thinking about right. it. No, they openly said Ukraine is coming in NATO. Now, I know we should not be afraid of Putin. I know that we don't go by what Putin says, but Putin has made it very clear. He has. That if you put them in NATO, it's on like Donkey Kong, okay? That's right. what that's basically what he's saying is you you want a, you want a, a regional war? You put them in NATO, that's what's going to happen because they know what NATO was formed. NATO was established to fight the Soviet Union, which doesn't exist anymore, but you and I both know Putin's trying to rebuild it. Yep. Now, we don't live by Putin. Putin's not our president. We don't take our orders from him. But I just wondered, is it smart, even if you knew that they were coming in NATO, is this a good time to just openly exactly. say that? Why now? Yeah, why now? Why do you come out and emphatically say this is going to happen now? Right. Exactly. It doesn't need to happen. Yeah. Yeah, what, somebody said, what is Donkey Kong? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need some new material. If he's if he's being for real. Now, he might be being funny, but if he's being for real, let me just say Donkey Kong is one of the greatest games in the history of the 80s. <laughs> uh, if you did not play Donkey Kong in the arcade, I'm not yep. talking about on Nintendo. That was still pretty cool. But if you did not play Donkey Kong in the arcade, you have no idea. You have not lived a life. You have not lived a life if you have not gone to the arcade and played Pac-Man and Donkey be, Kong. You need to be Googling that, asking Siri. Yeah. And on like Donkey Kong. It's important it's, stuff. I, it just happened. Somewhere somebody mm. just said it's on like Donkey Kong. That's so that's what it's all about. Uh, so so moving on, y'all. Uh, you know. I we, hate talking about this whole Ukraine war. Yeah, me Zelensky too. stuff. It is so oppressive because you know that it's not real and genuine. Yeah, and it's yeah, so frustrating right. of what it's done to our country. Exactly. And I just... Oh, let's, let's, let's just not forget that the border bill that yeah. you keep hearing the president say, exactly. if you would fund the border bill, right. 80... Listen, 80% of the money in the border bill went to Ukraine. 80% of this, all the money that was in the border bill. This needs to stop. This ought to be illegal. This should not be able to happen. More lies and trickery. Sick of it. I hate it. Sick well, listen, it. when I led the show that something shifted today, I didn't mean that it just shifted just today. Mm -hmm. I believe there was a harbinger. God gave us a sign to wake us up yep. that there are forces in play that are yes. preparing for something really bad, Sandy. Now, yeah. now you can accuse, accuse us, um, which wouldn't be a far stretch, that we're <laughs> conspiracy theorists, okay? We are. Uh, by the way, conspiracy theorists got a pretty good record right now. That we bring fear porn to the oh, yeah. show. Oh, yeah. I'm so sick we're of that. We're just trying to report the news. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but listen, go ahead. you talk about people, um, you're alluding, you were alluding to that things may be laying in wait. Do we need to talk much more about the Francis Scott Key bridge and what happened to it to even entertain the thought that there's some evil, possible, possible yeah, that's what I'm saying. evil actors in the shadows? Sandy, if you watch that video sped up eight times like we showed last week. It's crazy. It, the way it turns, I'm sorry, you can say whatever you want to say. I don't believe dropping an anchor made that hard of a turn. 
And if you needed further evidence. Look, there's just too many questions. Too I don't many. see how anyone can come to a conclusion yet. No, no. And I'm sure there'll be an investigation. Yeah. But meanwhile, how many more um, food processing plants are going to burn down? Oh, we're going to get to that. How many more attempts are going to be on the power plants? How many more attempts are going to be on the water filtration yeah. stations? Yeah. I yeah. mean. And, and then this is just, this just coincidence. That a massive ship mm. this week reportedly what 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 lost power is that not exactly what happened in Baltimore lost power in New York City Harbor right before the Verrazano how you say that Verrazano Verrazano Narrows Bridge right now they had three escort tugs but quickly brought in three more that were needed to prevent another potential disaster. According to the New York City tugboat right. captain. So is this a map here showing us the this, location? This is this where bridge. they were circling around towards the bridge. There's the bridge. You see the bridge. Right. A massive container ship reportedly lost power. That's the thing that gets me. That's exactly what happened in Baltimore. Lost sure. power. Sure. On the upper New York Bay, just before the, the Narrows Bridge connecting the New York City boroughs of Staten Island and Brooklyn. According to Captain John Conrad, CEO of the ship, a New York City tugboat captain informed him uh, that the 344-meter container ship lost power while transitioning, transiting, transiting the New York Harbor and, of course, had to bring that third tugboat in. And there it is. Look at this bridge. And look at the, look at the cargo ship. Say, did, did it say how long, how large this bridge was? I mean, look at that span. It was – well, it says that – down here it says um, – about the about the bridge, I think it says uh, that the bridge What's that was it? what what now? What's that right there? Okay, uh, that's it. Thirteen thousand seven hundred foot suspension bridge. Look at that. It was the largest suspension bridge in the world until uh, until one that was built a little bit larger in England, I think. Uh, but but here's the thing: Goodness. lost power. Well. Multiple people are reporting that one of the things that came out in Congress not long ago was that when they started talking about the cyber attacks mm -hmm. potential, potential that, that people have forgotten, and I don't have the video to show it, but supposedly when they're talking about China being able to hack our power grid yeah. and hack all this yeah. other stuff, one of the things they said is they believe that they have the ability to take over. Take control. Take control of maritime Remotely ships. take control of yes. ships, of vessels. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. And so, so look, yeah, it could have been power. But how about this? You In just a couple of weeks after one the worst maritime <laughs> exactly. disaster ever, you have another one going towards one of the longest suspension bridges exactly. in the world in New York. So while you're talking about this, power? let's just explore this. Why all this repeat of the same thing? Let's go back to last year. Let's talk about balloons. We had balloons, balloons, Come bal on, say balloon that. gate. Yep. Then we had um, train derailment gate. And then we had um, breaking into or trying to somehow disrupt su power substations. Mm. And now we have airplanes continuing to have problems like multiple issues every week with airplanes when we've gone years and years without hearing of these ongoing issues we've got bridges why do we have a repeat yeah. of the repeat. same narrative exactly it's very interesting to me and i believe it 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 screams a pattern patterns patterns there you go patterns. when you have a pattern mm. And you know what they love to say? Well, this kind of things happen all the time. They're just being reported now. Well, why are they being reported now? Why were they not being reported before? Don't you think we should have yes. known before if massive ships that were able to take out bridges lost if, power? If it were happening before with this kind of frequency, they weren't reporting it, but they're reporting it now. So why, why now? Why now? Why, why now? do we need to know now if, in fact, it, if it ever did happen before? But, yeah, there's, there's a narrative here. Yeah. There's a pattern here. Yeah. And, I, you know, we need to stop being um, casual observers. And sometimes we need to stop and ask some questions, right? Right. We need to understand what pattern, what narrative, 
why the timing? What's going on? Instead of just consuming this news yeah. and just consuming it yeah. and not really trying to understand what's going on. Yeah, and, and people, I see in the live chat, a lot of people are talking about Leave the World Behind and the movie. And, you know, one of the things I saw, and, and look, if this is you, I'm not mad at you. I'm not trying to push back on you and, and call you out or anything. But somebody said something in one of the comments. Are we following movies or are we following the gospel? Uh, look, we're not taking our lead from movies. We're just trying to tell you that this is the way they work. And, and, and predictive mm -hmm. programming is a very real thing. Mm -hmm. And when you go back and look at Leave the World Behind, we covered it extensively. And then we got this movie coming out this Friday, Civil War, yes. uh, that I believe is going to stoke some emotions. Uh, in Leave the World Behind, the opening sign that we had been attacked and that we had lost control of of our commercial vessels was a tanker ship, just like what hit Baltimore, ran aground, run aground on the beach and lost control. And then planes start falling. I'm not predicting that. I'm not saying that's happening, yeah. but do we not have the right? And do we not need to know if, if we have lost control at times? Yes. You start thinking about some of these things that are happening with the airlines. You start thinking, have we been infiltrated from our southern border with people who are now planted at Boeing and some other places, are there things going on that we're not being told? And yes. that's why I go back to the eclipse. I'm going to throw this up here while I'm saying this. That's why I go back to today when we saw this and we, we were just amazed by this totality that we call it a harbinger, a sign from God. Right. Not saying when you see this eclipse, the world's coming to an end. No, it's a sign for the people that know God to wake up. Yes. Something is happening that that the world doesn't want us to know. Exactly. And and we that's why we got to have shows like this. Now, I'm going to show you tonight. We may not have the show much longer. I'm just going to be honest with you right now. I'm, I'm, I, I hate to do it, but I'm talking about the platform that we're on right now. We're on two platforms now, YouTube and Rumble. I think I think we're on there. But the reality is this. We're going to show you a news article tonight that how in the next few weeks and months, we may not survive on this one of these platforms because they are getting ready to shut down voices like us. Yes. They don't want this kind of information going out. No, they don't. We get flagged every week. We used to not get flagged all the time. We get flagged sporadically once every five or six weeks. We now get flagged every single week. And we ain't doing nothing, anything different. In fact, we hold back from some of the things that we want to say. Yeah. But we get flagged. Sure. All right. So look, our president, mm, what a jam up job he's doing. Uh, he he has said, you know, we're not going to refill the the strategic oil. Uh, um, what do they call it? Um, petroleum. Strategic Petrol Petroleum supply. Reserve. Mm -hmm. uh, the Biden administration will not move forward with this plan, even though it promised it would do it. Uh, can you imagine the politician not fulfilling their promises? The Energy Department said it was keeping the taxpayers' interests in the forefront in its decision not to purchase as many as 3 million barrels of, barrels of oil for the Strategic Petroleum Reserve in Louisiana. The plan for the, bar the barrels to be delivered in August and September had been announced in mid-March. Quote, we will not award the current solicitations for the Bio-Choctaw site and we'll solicit available capacity as market conditions allow. We will continue to monitor market dynamics because here's the thing, Sandy, they can't afford to buy the oil that they unloaded to supposedly reduce gas prices and, and they don't want to accept the fact that the policies of not drilling and not being energy sufficient is causing our reserves, which is supposed to be for our military. Exactly. The strategic petroleum reserve is not for the average consumer. And the way to things use. look, we may need it any moment now. But everybody in chat, uh, shout out to us if you saw the price of gas at the pump go up anywhere from eight to 20 cents in the last couple of days. Now look, I don't know the exact reason that that happened. And we know spring and summer when it's travel season or spring break or whatever, you can see a spike maybe for no real reason, but we did have um, quite a few spikes anywhere. I saw from eight cents to 20 cents a gallon right where we live. So if you saw the same, let us know. Yeah, so so their supposed target is seventy nine dollars a barrel or lower, mm. but they decided not to buy it because it's eighty five dollars a barrel. Yes, it is. Well, you know what? I believe, and I hope I'm wrong because gas directly affects all of us. But the reality is this: 
I don't see it coming down. I, I see it going up. Because when you're not oh, drilling... No. I cannot imagine the price. I would love to see that, but I can't imagine the price starting to fall right now. I yeah, mean, no. you know... Getting into summer? You've had to help me with some shopping lately, just running to the store, getting essentials, or maybe, you know, we were having a dinner or a party even while I've been recovering. And we are astounded at some of the prices we are seeing. Yes. At just common items that are... Almost 50% more. I'm not saying every item. I'm definitely not saying across the board. But certain things that we are seeing, the price jumps that are unbelievable. Look at some of these prices. Four eighty nine, Teresa Harris. Four fifty nine wow. in Seattle. Wow. Wow. I mean, th this is My absolutely goodness. ridiculous. Uh, that people, 375 in southwest Pennsylvania. I mean, my goodness. This isn't even summer. This now, is not even summer. I know most of the, or a lot of us have had spring break. Spring break is probably over or just about completely over for all the school systems. But this, you know, this is frustrating. It's beginning to hurt a little. <laughs> just with the gas. That doesn't even include the, the increased food cost. Yeah, yeah. You got to help you if you have to go to a restaurant. Yeah, exactly. You're really feeling it there. Well, one of the things, if you're lucky enough, if you're blessed enough to have gold, I mean, very few people can afford to have gold. Oh, yeah. But if you have gold, when times go, get rough, gold is goes up. Right. But look at this. This is this is usually, we use that word a lot tonight, harbinger. But this is sort of a yes. harbinger gold is to tell you where the economy is. Oh, yeah. Gold prices hit new record. As China's central bank ups reserves and UBS eyes twenty five hundred dollars. Now that's not where it is. It hasn't reached twenty five hundred dollars yet. I think it's still in the twenty three hundred dollar range, unless something crazy has happened in the last day or two. But yeah, that's where they want to see it. An ounce of gold hit twenty three hundred fifty five dollars in Asian trading at the People's Bank of China, bolstered its gold reserves to 72.75 million fine troy ounces in March. It's 17th consecutive or successive, successive month of purchases. Gold has been a bumper rally since the start of the month, driven by purchase of various central banks with 64 net metro tons bought, tons bought in January and February alone from the World Council. Now, why is that important? That's important because BRICS, Right. which the C in BRICS is China, and Russia, these two are leading it. Russia, we just saw China double down. Now Russia is doubling down on gold and foreign currencies to uproot the U.S. dollar. Remember, we've recorded here on the big picture that BRICS has said that their, digi their CBDC that they're going to have mm -hmm. and all of their currency they're going to have, their paper currency, is going to be gold Back. Gold back. So what do you see? You see Russia and China buying gold like crazy. They're going to be backed by something real, something exactly. stable. Right. Where we, our <laughs> currency is basically being propped up by faith and belief. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it's not a good faith. <laughs> Watch this. BRICS is the largest buyer of gold in 2023. Let that sink in. BRICS is the largest buyer of gold in last year as members accumulated tons of the precious metal reported by the World Gold Council. China alone purchased 225 tons of gold while Russia, India, Brazil, and South Africa came next in line. Reports suggest that BRICS could back their soon-to-be-released currency with gold to take on the U.S. dollar. Ladies and gentlemen, this is getting real. Yeah. This is getting real. I mean, I don't remember how many members are already um, a part of BRICS, but they're lining up to be considered or added um, daily, probably. I mean, they see the writing on the wall. Yeah. They're going to turn those petrodollars in and send them back home. Right. <laughs> and we use, we, 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 let, me, let me remind y'all that when you hear somebody say sanctions, I really didn't even know this till recently. We need to sanction them. Do you know what they sanction? They sanction petrodollars. They did not sanction. Now, yes, they have the ability to shut down business, but when they say currency, the sanctions were tied to the petrodollar because everybody used the petrodollar. So America had this global power 
to just threaten sanctions, yep. meaning we will withhold our dollar from you and you won't be able to do it. But now you have Russia, China, and BRICS and all them going away from the petrodollar. Yes. And it's not just so that they would have their own currency. It's so that they will negate any threat of sanctions because you can't sanction somebody that don't use your money. Do you see how America is a laughing stock? I love my country. Yeah. So you're saying the foothold, and I hate to say the power that we've had or that has allowed our country to become so strong, we are losing that. We're losing it. We are losing that, and it's going to make us weaker, weaker, and very vulnerable. Our economy is in trouble. So I think we trouble. all know that. Our economy is in trouble. Yeah. And it's not just Biden's fault. Biden's got a lot of responsibility. It is people on both sides of the aisle, but it's it's more than our government. It's entities. It's, it's, it's corporations. Sure. It's the World Economic Forum. It is a long-term plan. That's why I go back to this again. When we looked up and we saw this today, I felt a sense yeah. of an awakening. Wake up, wake up. Something significant is happening. It is a harbinger. It is a sign of something is shifting. Yes. Prepare yourself. Make sure your family is protected. Make sure you are focused. Right. Sandy, they're coming in all, all, all different ways. Look at this. This next story is ridiculous. Did y'all know, this is according to Business Insider, insurance companies are now using drones to find reasons to cancel your home insurance. What? This is insane. Here's another reason to hate drones is what the author says from the business exactly. side. Insurance companies across the nation are now using drones to airily scope out customers' homes and suss out reasons to counsel their home insurance, the Wall Street Journal reported. That's what happened to Cindy Picos, who told the journal her insurance provider used a drone to take pictures of her California home's roof prior to deciding to drop her. I thought they had the wrong house. Our roof, is in, our roof is in fine shape. To prove it, she got an independent inspection that found her roof had another 10 years of life expectancy. Still, her insurance company upheld the decision to cancel her plan, citing the aerial photos, which yeah. they refused to let her see. What's up with this? What in the world? Though it may seem dystopian, insurance companies have drones, manned planes, and high-altitude balloons at their disposal for aerial surveillance offering nearly full coverage of the country. <sighs> what? Mm. Companies have dropped customers over images that are outdated, mis misrepresentative. Uh, despite the problems, the technology is developing quickly. At this rate, properties could be surveilled in high definition on a daily basis. What in the world? I mean, it's just ridiculous. This is insane. Do you not have enough things to, I hate to say, worry about, but to spend your time trying to take care of, and then your insurance company is going to do a sneak attack on you? Exactly. I mean, the part that got me is that high definition, 24 hours a day, every day, you could be surveilled. Not by the government. We already, we already believe that. The insurance company, your insurance company. That we pay, think about it, we spend a lifetime paying them money, and most of the time we never even use it. Exactly. And when we do use it, they up our rate or cancel us. Or, you know, they want to scrutinize your claim, and you have to, I hate to say, go to war, but get into at least discussions with them until things can be settled and taken care of. And... Um, to have to worry about being canceled for something like that. I mean, my heart goes out to these people in Florida who have seen their homeowner's rates just yeah. absolutely skyrocket in the last year. I mean, it's really putting people in peril when you get that bill and you're like, there's no way I can pay this. Okay, so then they're going, you know, you want to shop around? Well, it's going to be the same thing wherever you go. Mm. Well, several people in the live chat are saying, They've got the same thing already happened to them. Uh, Rick is a farmer. He says Farm Bureau Insurance flies over his house and his farm to take pictures on his property all the time. 
it's like this has been going on, and you know, a lot of people didn't know this was going on, including me. Yeah, I had I no know. idea this drones flying over my house, looking at my roof, you know, all this kind of stuff. Exactly. I mean, I mean, it's all about surveillance, y'all. And and this everything that we're about to cover now is just further evidence of what they're going to use. Remember, they leave no crisis unused. Do you think that this is just part of the you will own nothing and be yes, happy? Yes, absolutely. Because if we're processing you out of insurance and you can't afford your property taxes if you're a homeowner and um you know you're gonna have to do all of this to even be eligible to have insurance if you're somehow able to afford it so many people are going to be priced out of home ownership yes and you're going to have to go into some sort of rental no, and then when you dig down and investigate how many of these insurance companies and other companies like that are owned by companies like BlackRock, yes. BlackRock Vanguard, yes. and State Street? Yes. And it's just a monopoly, which is going to make it easier for all of this to come to pass in the first place. Absolutely. Evil plans. Evil plans. Evil plans. Yeah. It's exactly what it is. And then, you know, that like I said, always never let a good crisis go to waste is what they say. So the bird flu is the new thing uh, detected in cattle and right. infects American largest egg facility closes due to spread. Largest, let's read that again, largest egg facility in America closes due to the spread of the bird flu. So what do you think that, uh, interpret that? In a language that everybody out there can understand. Well, it's the next why why. It's the next why why, and it's the um, next five dollar dozen of eggs at some point if yeah. this keeps going. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the price of eggs is has been creeping up for months, but about to go through the roof. Th listen, if this is the largest provider of eggs, I mean, that's going to hit at some point. Yeah. Well, fears of a bird flu outbreak have returned after it has been reported a man in Texas fell ill from bird flu. After being around a sick cow infected with bird flu, the first ever recorded instance of this happening, along with the largest egg producer in the United States temporarily shuttering, shuttering operations, as health authorities and the mainstream media are warning, this has the makings of the next pandemic. And ladies and gentlemen, right on time. Yeah. Because we are about to be full throttle into... The election, Here and when the next wham wham comes, then you've got mail in ba ballots, you've got mysterious counting stopping at three o'clock in the morning, and mysterious uh, yeah. changes in voting. And tolls. how convenient for them that they already have pandemic infrastructure established, right? Yep. Mm. Good point, babe. Good point. Uh, this this particular uh, article goes on to say, uh, this is absolutely devastating news for Cal, Maine, and the entire Panhandle region, which has already suffered so much already. Given the latest development, all producers must practice heightened biosecurity measures. The rapid spread of the virus means we must act quickly. The current risk of the public remains minimal. It is important for us in this industry to maintain a high level of vigilance. State and national agencies will continue to provide updated guidance and develops as develops warrants. Wow. So it's about to get very, very interesting because there, there is an all-out attack. When I show you this next article, uh, there is an all-out attack against local farming, mm -hmm. local chickens. Oh, yes. You know, they don't want you to have anything to sustain yourself, and then they want you to buy their stuff, but then their processors are burning to the ground, shutting down, all this kind of stuff. Why? Because they want you to eat the bugs. Well, let's talk even in more specifics. We've seen the attack on the large farms. Yeah. And the multi-generational, you know, just vast farm and ranching families. But now they're bringing it all the way down yeah. to the small, the small farmer, the yeah. small farms. And this next story. Yeah. I think it screams let me, let that me, we're not just coming after the big guys. All right, so before I do that, let me take a, take a moment here. I've seen a couple of people in the live chat. I don't usually get a chance to scan down it that are a little overwhelmed. They're, you're really scared. Uh, this this is scaring you. That's not our intention. No. And I know that's what happens. I, yes. We can't. That cannot be avoided. When you cover the kind of things that we cover, it, it will strike fear. But let me just tell you, 
the eclipse that we saw today was a spiritual thing. It really was. It's not, I'm not talking about making it weird, new age type thing. What I mean by it was that it was a warning to wake up, to wake up. But remember, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Yes. But he told us, go back to when he was rebuilding the walls of Nehemiah and they were being attacked by people who were mocking them, trying to destroy them. They didn't stop working. Nehemiah said, put one hammer in, put a hammer in one hand and a sword in there the other go. hand. So you fight for your family, yes. but you keep building. Yes. So I'm going to encourage everybody. Our show is not about fear. Our show is about telling you things you're not going to hear on the mainstream media. Right. But we're going to give it to you from a kingdom perspective. I promise you this. So be encouraged. Yes. Take a deep breath. These things you need to know. Yes. You need to know they're happening, but you do not let your life be run by them. Exactly right. Okay. There sorry that I had hope. to preach a little bit. Oh, come on. But sometimes I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. I got to preach out because that's who I am. Um, so UK requires farmers. The United Kingdom, we got a lot of people watching from the United Kingdom. United Kingdom requires farmers and homeowners to register their poultry in their backyard flocks to stop the spread of the bird flu. That's what I mean by they never let any crisis go to waste. Exactly. You got to now register your mm -hmm. chickens. Come on. You got to tag your home chickens. Yeah. Your home flocks, this in, even includes poultry birds such as pets. You got to you got to register your parakeet. The United Kingdom has implemented a new policy that requires families, not just farmers, families and farmers to register their poultry flocks whether they have hundreds or just even one or two in their backyard. This applies to chickens, turkeys, Aviary, how you say that? Aviary. Aviary birds. Birds of prey. Uh, I haven't seen that one. Is that cassowaries? I guess. Ducks, emus, geese, guinea fowls, kiwis, ostriches, partridges, pheasants, pigeons, and a partridge in a pear tree. I mean, if you got a bird as a pet, are you growing one so you can eat it or eat its eggs? You got to register it with the government? Ladies and gentlemen, does this make sense to anybody? Uh, this sounds like a mechanism of control. They don't want you um, capturing rainwater. They want to know if you have ponds on. I mean, come on. Come on. <sighs> I must digress. Yeah. Yeah. I got to take a drink real, real you quick. You need to. You need to take a drink and a break. All so, right. So look, early in the show, if you're coming in late, I shared with you that we don't know how long we're going to be on this platform. We want to be on this platform till the rapture happens, till, until we leave this earth. We want to be a voice in your life. But I've been feeling this coming, and uh, this came down this week. YouTube is now openly stating that it bears a responsibility, listen to yeah. the wording, to manipulate algorithms in the buildup to the elections. Google's vi video sharing pr platform you know, we're on it right now, yep. and this may cause me to get in real trouble. I'm just reading what they said. Uh, Giant YouTube has announced that they have a responsibility to throttle content and manipulate algorithms that they feel could affect integrity and influence the 2024 elections around the world. Remember those special events that I told you about that they gave us a warning that, hey, your comments on special events could get you taken <laughs> yeah. away? Oh, yeah. YouTube wrote on a blog post, as our CEO, Neil Mohan, shared in an annual letter, we got four big areas of focus this year. We're using AI to empower creativity, creativity, helping creators succeed and recognize the next general studios, powering TV for an entirety of new generation, building the tools for community safe. But what does that all mean for our viewers and creators if the products we use each day on YouTube, which decides, gets built, and how? This year... This is what this lady said here. She's uh, one of the leaders being yeah. interviewed. She said, it's interesting because did you know that 40% of the globe is going to go through elections in 2024? That really hones in on our responsibility work and our viewers to get authoritative, useful information in certain times. Her name is Vulich. Uh, she did not specify what the entails exactly in this broadcast called Reclaim the Net. Uh, it says the four, but she did, the existing four hours of responsibility are this. 
to remove content that violates our policy as quickly as possible. Raise up. L listen to the wording here, y'all. Raise up. This is YouTube raising up authoritative voices when people are looking for breaking news and information. No, in other words, when something breaks, a catastrophe happens, an earthquake happens, they put their people yeah. first. Reward trusted eligible creators and artists. In other words, reward woke programs yeah. and reduce the spread of content that brushes right up against our policy line. Well, Sandy, They're it's not coming, looking good for us. No, it's not. <laughs> They're just coming right on out there and, and, and saying it. Hey, it's not looking good for we're us. We're going to present it to you the way we want you to get it. You're, yeah. It's going to be our point of view or nothing. Yeah. And if you needed further evidence, guess what's happening with these glorious fact checkers out there? Uh, Ricky Scaparo from In Time Headlines, our buddy, he shared this. Fact checkers are now flagging posts. Of course, this is post-eclipse since we've talked about this. But are flagging posts that suggest recent quake earthquakes in New Jersey being felt in, in New York and the coming eclipse could be a warning from God. They're fact checking it. Listen to this. This is unbelievable. Uh, it says... When, uh, what's her name? Mar Mar Marjorie, Marjorie Taylor. Taylor Green. Marjorie Taylor Green. She, she, tw she tweeted out on, on X, formerly Twitter, on Friday, quote, God, whether, no matter how you feel about her, I like what she said here. I'm not endorsing her, but she says, God is sending America strong signs to, for us to repent. Earthquakes and eclipses are many more and many more things to come. I pray that our country listens. I, I mean, I don't. I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican. I don't, have, I don't see how you have a problem with that. But watch what happened. Fact checkers jumped on there. The, the congressman's post got hit with a community note. You've seen that little blue bar, blurb down there. Mm -hmm. uh, small blurb. Right. That post that the readers needed context. Mm. And uh, this is what was said. Quote, earthquakes happen all the time, all around the world. Eclipses are not random. They follow strict mathematical rules and can be predicted centuries before they happen. NASA has a site listing eclipses up to the year 3000. Yeah. So your point is, we know that. We know that earthquakes happen all the time and all around the world. We know that eclipses can be predicted. But at the same time, we also believe that a God yeah. can send signs and harbingers to wake up his people. And just like when Jonah, come on, this earthquake, I mean, this this. Eclipse was the sign of Jonah. When, when Jonah went into Nineveh in the Bible, it is proven even historically, whether you want to believe the Bible or not, historically, you can go to Wikipedia and research the great Assyrian eclipse, okay. and it will tell you, I believe it was June 15th or something like that, 763 BC. They give you the exact day that is believed to be when Jonah walked into Nineveh and told him to repent. And when he said that, the sun went into a total eclipse. Now that's a that's yep. called a sign from heaven, even though that was a mathematical followed system that you just said, you fact checker, God still is in he's in math. Yes, he he, is. he can design, he designed this whole thing called the solar system. Whether you believe it or not, you're gonna find out one day real quick that it's true. So are you, I'm, are you uh, saying that we need to look at the calendar and see what the date is 40 days from now? Is that what you're trying to say? Hmm. Mm, yeah, I think you probably need to. That's another show for another day. But I have seen people talk about mm. 40 days from, from the eclipse and 70 days from the eclipse. These are two very important dates. Look at the Jewish calendar, 40 days from now and 70 days from mm. now. I'm telling y'all, something shifted today. I'm telling y'all, there's nothing mythical, no voodoo kind of weird no. hippie stuff happened. I'm not talking about something, oh, nom, 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 nom. it's an eclipse, oh, give me a crystal, let me rub a crystal, nom, nom, nom. that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about God put something in the heavens today yes. to wake us up yes. to a timeline. Exactly. Yeah. They want to talk about NASA knowing what God knew yeah. when the eclipse is going to be. God, God came for you, NASA. Exactly. Come on. You, you ever heard that thing where people say you, NASA's only missing one letter? They dropped a letter. You ever uh, heard that? No. Come on, think about it. If you drop, you take, put an S in there, mm -hmm. move those letters around. Satan! <laughs> Satan! Mm, okay. We're having fun tonight. Mm. I'm still a little giddy from that eclipse. Yeah. 
Let's watch this again, y'all. Look, this it. it got so dark so fast. So fast. It was so crazy, Sandy. Yeah. It it, it dropped, what do you think, 10 degrees? At least. At least, maybe even 15 degrees. And then boom! Look at those fire towers of spiraling fire shooting out the sides, y'all. That we lovely. That, unbelievable. Unbelievable pictures, y'all. Great day. It was a great day. And I'm gonna show y'all, I'm gonna show y'all. You better not leave yet because at the end of the program, I'm gonna show right. you something you ain't seen. And that is video from astronauts in space yes, you showing you that. the eclipse from space on the Earth. This might be a good time to talk about what's going to be dropping tonight and tomorrow night. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, does y'all y'all know Tony excited. Merkel from the Confessionals podcast? We love him. He's our he's our resident uh, spiritually, spirit-filled Bigfoot expert. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. He's our squatchologist. He's a squatchologist. And let me tell you something. If you follow the Confessionals podcast and Tony Merkel, he is he covers some stuff. You think our well, you think we talk about some stuff? How in the world has that man survived on exactly. being online? I mean, he talks about some stuff, y'all. And his guest dude, but guess what? I am so honored. He he brought me on his program, did an interview about CERN and yes. the spiritual connection. And and I think the timing is just amazing because, you know, they reignited CERN, to CERN today. Yes, they did. To CERN lit up today. And by the way, when we recorded this, we did not know no. that CERN was going to turn on today. today. And this is going live at midnight tonight. If you have, if you have an audio podcast app, mm -hmm. the Confessionals podcast with me on there will go live at midnight tonight. And what, what is it, tomorrow at 7.30? 7.30, I believe. 7.30 Central. I'll share links, and, and I'll put it in a – I'll create a post here on That'd YouTube and on Facebook. But at 7.30 p.m. Central time, tomorrow night, Tuesday, April 9th, uh, I will be on his show, The Confessionals. He'll yes. be interviewing me. Uh, so I'd love to get you guys to go over there and check it out, blow it up, fill it up, comment, let them know you're, you're coming over from the Big Picture family. And I know that there will be a blessing. We'll be right back in 30 seconds. Would you like to help us build the big picture family? We're on a mission to wake up the world to what is really going on. All you have to do is go to our website at LarryRaglin.com and make a one-time gift. Or you can become a monthly partner. Any amount is a blessing and an encouragement to us. While you're there, make sure you get a copy of our book, I See Greatness in You. Browse our merchandise store. Connect with us on our social media links and join our mailing list. We appreciate it. And remember, we ain't woke, but we are certainly awake. Oh, yeah. And any way you can help us, we appreciate it so much. We thank you for all those super chats, super thanks, yes. and everything that you do to help our ministry. All right, y'all. Uh, I think it might be time for... No. Uncle Jimmy! Come on. Here we are. We don't have our fancy uh, weird backgrounds because... We are so jammed up here in this tiny little space. Yep. I, I cannot even tell you. The Lord is definitely with us. And poor little Cosmo, he had to stay home. Cosmo's so he's not home. here either. Yep. So we don't have our green screen. We have our 1970s authentic... Mm -hmm. Knock on wood. Wood paneling. Real wood paneling. And if you think that's something, you should see the rest of the house. Yeah, the house is cool. I think it's cool. It takes me back to my childhood, y'all. It's decorated in 1970s. It's like a 70s R, A, R, I'm sorry, say R and B. Hey, get my Barry White voice on. Better watch myself. It is quite interesting, though. Very it is. Cool. It is. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. They've gone painstakingly. Uh, they've done some shopping to make this very authentic. Yeah, that's pretty I don't cool. think everything was here, but there's art. There are ceramic figurines. Yep, 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 yep. There are dishware. It's just really cool. Somebody saying, "Oh no, you forgot Cosmo." They they miss Cosmo. Cosmo, I know. Cosmo is he's he's okay. He's okay. He's okay. He'll be back next week. But remember, that's the real stuff, man. We're this is <laughs> we are live. Can we can we tell them where we're at now? Can we just sure. do we still need to say undisclosed? So we were staying in Benton, Arkansas. We got a lot of folks watching from Arkansas here. Can I just say real quick, I have loved Arkansas. Arkansas people are great. They remind me, yes. so 
Sorry to say it this way, remind me of Alabama folks. Which, which, what I mean by that is Southern. It's Southern hospitality. Very People have been so kind. Yeah. And can I say, Arkansas people, y'all are patriotic. I have seen more gigantic American yes. flags. I'm talking about, the, you just see them that's at the car dealerships, the ones as big as a house. Yes. We went down one interstate. There was like five or six of them in five miles. And then Very we got on another interstate, and there's some that was about half that size. And Arkansas loves America. Yeah. So I just want to say, America. Yes. Thank you, Arkansas. We're in Benton, Arkansas, America. and we drove today to Russellville, Arkansas, yep. which was the right in the totality. It was awesome. It was awesome. Eclipse. It was great. All right, Sandy, we are in the same, we are in the uh, Supernatural AI update, yeah. and this one's pretty interesting. Samsung, uh, we better watch out because you know maybe we got ours in. We got a Samsung refrigerator. Maybe maybe ours got beat the beat the deadline for I AI. Hope so. But Samsung is putting AI into washing machines and cameras in into fridges to build the kitchen of the future. This makes me feel so And why wonderful. is this so important? So important because it's the kitchen of the future, Sandy. It's the kitchen of the future, that's why. New artificial intelligence technology can save energy and stop food waste. So the cameras are going to watch you and go, uh, you did not finish that, Dave. Dave, Dave, a lot of people would love to eat that, Dave, and you only ate half of it. We see you, Dave. You saw you throw it in the garbage. Dave, stop talking to me, computer. I cannot do that, Dave. You know, you're being silly, but come on. Of course this is where it's going. It's where it's going. It's the Internet of Things, IoT, all of your appliances, spying on you, they're talking to each other, you know, yep. your refrigerator can watch you in the kitchen, your television, your big screen can watch you in the living room, your washing machine machine can spy on you in the laundry room, and as you're walking down the hall on the way to your bedroom, your thermostat yep. can check your blood pressure for you. Wow. And it's ridiculous. Wow. It's out of control. Dave, how long has it been since you washed the dishes, Dave? You're letting yourself go, Dave. By the way, Dave, do you really need that honey bun? Dave, have you seen yourself lately? I love you, Dave, but you are, your pants are a little tight, Dave. Mm. And I'm here to help you because I'm your friend. Dave, put the honey bun down. You know what? I'm being silly, but that's what's coming. They're going to call you fat. Well, it's definitely alluding to that, and... Sorry if we are just going on. We're a little tired. We're a little tired. We're a little, we're a little loopy right now. Yeah. The new appliances <clears throat> include fridges with cameras built in to scan food as it comes into the house and washing machines that are able to alter their cycles to minimize energy use. The company also released a new robot vacuum cleaner named AI JetBot Combo that can drive around the house and locate pets. Okay. The new artificial intelligence features can do more than previously imagined with the power of AI. They also aim to turn home devices into platforms for entertainment. Appliances. Your refrigerator is going to be your platform of entertainment. Yeah. Uh, it says the company revealed fridges and even hobs with... What is hob? With displays built in. I don't know what that is. The new products came as technology world rushes to integrate AI, but they also released amid concerns, the perils, blah, blah, blah. We know what they're going to say on that. They always have to throw in that, but we are concerned that for your safety, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> oh, they're laughing at my Dave impression. <laughs> uh, from, from what was that, 2001? Uh, what, was, what was his name? We can't ever remember it. How? 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 How yeah. 3000? How 3000? Yeah. Step away from that honeymoon. Step away from that honeymoon, Dave. Dave, yeah. when's the last time you looked at yourself in a mirror, Dave? Mm. Dave, I love you. You know that I love you. And I love you enough to tell you the truth. Dave, you need to eat your vegetables. Let's move on. <laughs> okay. Google's DeepMind AI claims to have mastered football. By the way, this is an abomination. This is soccer. <laughs> I want to just go ahead and say that right now. To our global friends, I know you call it football, <laughs> but I'm sorry, it's soccer. Right. It's not football. Right. College football, NFL, that's football. 
This is football. This is soccer. Google's deep mind AI claims to have mastered football tactics. Revolutionary tactic AI has offered insights in indistinguishable from human efforts. So they're literally out coaching coaches. And so there's not going to be any kind of coach. So they're going to have a robot on the sidelines <laughs> sending players in. But that's really what it's saying. It says it's built a tool that can claim to match experts' football tactics and predict the outcome of corner kicks. And you thought that the only people that were going to be losing their jobs were those working in factories. Mm -hmm. And by the way, when I read this, I thought maybe they learned all this from people's reactions playing all those video games all these Ooh. years. They've been keeping that data. DeepMind has previously used the artificial intelligence to defeat human champions in the notorious complex board game Go, as well as beat professional gamers in the video game StarCraft II. But this AI division unveiled Tactic AI following three years of development alongside staff from Liber Liverpool Soccer Club. It's a combination of generative and predictive AI to achieve state-of-the-art results. So basically, they're just basically, once again, saying we don't need you humans. We can now out-coach you. We can now wow. out-build you. We can out-cook you. But then you have some people are saying the quiet thing out loud. Again. Which, again. We, we talk about open AI. Open AI, which is, of course, the owner of ChatGPT, board member, says the quiet part out loud. Quote, almost all forms. You just said it. You just said it. We, we were told not long ago it was just labor. Sure. But he says almost all forms of human labor will be replaced by artificial intelligence. This should really bother everyone. Yeah, everyone. So look at this right here. Look at this right here. Let's let's watch this little clip here from him saying. So there was a rather fascinating statement put forward by an open AI board member, which was quite concerning if you are someone in the working world, which many of us are. And it's pretty much quite the norm now that we've seen AI technology advance for people to make predictions on what the future is going to be like. However, this one is concerning labor and economics, so it's a little bit different, but it's still rather important. You can see right here that it says Larry Summers, now an open AI board member, thinks that AI could replace all forms of labor, just don't expect a productivity miracle anytime soon. So this video is going to break down this statement. So I just want to show you just openly what they're saying. They're making it very, very clear that this is what's going to happen. Well, let's just take that a little farther and say, okay, so they're saying all forms of labor, but what they're not saying in this article, unless it's somewhere down at the bottom, is we're not going to stop there. Right. We're not going to stop with just manual labor, labor type jobs. Yep. We know that this is creeping into the financial markets. We, you just talked about the story where it possibly is going to affect literal coaching. Coaches, yeah, yeah, decisions, yeah. and plans that coaches make. Yeah. So we know it's in fast food as well. Oh, it's <laughs> well, you know, we even read an article this week. We don't have it tonight, but Taco mm -hmm. Bell, um, uh, I can't remember all of them. There's like four or five of them right now are say, what just happened? Just happened. <laughs> okay. Okay. We just, are y'all still there? Everything just went black. Are you guys still there? We, Hope you're still there. We we lost everything. I mean, everything just went black. Okay, so I think we're still here. Give us a thumbs up if you're still here. CJ, uh, let us know if you're still there. Yeah, I mean, it just literally, everything went black. We was like, okay. Okay. Okay, this is, we're here. Nice. We're here. All right, okay. So so let's, let's. Uh, we may be running out of data. I'm using my hotspot here. Uh, Japanese company, Sandy, warned that social order, as we know it, could collapse in the age of AI. Does this guy ring a bell? <laughs> We've been and trying to- He looks to, a little familiar. Looks a little familiar. Uh Two, ja two influential Japanese companies are warning that social order could collapse in the new AI era, new AI era, as they call for new laws to restrain this technology. Nippon Telegraph and Telephone, NTT, Japan's largest telecommunications company and newspaper, uh, Yomayuri Shunbun, the most widely read newspaper in the country with the morning circulation of about 6 million copies, published a proposal on Monday calling for new laws to restrain generative AI technology. Remember, generative AI is when they no longer need programmers. They program themselves, which is coming very, very soon. 
I personally believe it's already achieved. I think so. I believe it's already to been achieved. To some degree. Yeah. The companies warned that in the worst case scenario, democracy and social order could re- cause collapse resulting in wars. If AI is left unchecked, adding to the technology has already st- started to damage human dignity. Really? Uh, there exists a global push to stop the potential negative impact posed by AI. And it goes on and on and on. All these people trying to give us warnings. You know, it just drives me crazy that the same people that are giving us warnings, trying mm-hmm. to make us feel like they're really worried about where this is going, it's quite frankly the same people that's doing the damage. <laughs> uh, is that is that sort of like Republicans and Democrats because they're both doing the same thing? Uh, yeah. To some extent. They call it the uniparty. Now, uh, this is going to be a, a shortened show tonight. We've got one more thing to show you tonight, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. So we're not, we're not winding down, so don't check out on us now. But we do want to remind you that if you have not already done this, go to our website, LarryRagland.com or LarryRagland.tv. You can see we've, we've highlighted and featured our clip show, which is the biggest show we've ever had. And we're so thankful to all of you that watched it. You can yes. still go back and watch it because it's not just about now that the clip is over. It's not just about that. It's about what we talked about tonight, the harbinger. What is coming? What is the sign that God really gave us in the heavenlies today? Yes. And then, of course, you can see uh, there's our live stream. Uh, Sandy's beautiful picture there looking up <laughs> at the sky. We're both looking. That was when we live streamed it today. It was awesome. That will be linked down in the description. I don't have it there yet, but you can watch it. And, of course, you can become a partner with us if you'd like to. We appreciate that. We don't push that. It's not required. But if you'd like to become a monthly partner, with us to help us with our television show. We're still in the development stages. We're going on Faith TV, which is a global television program. They're still working out the details of that. So that's coming. That's coming. But I want to show you this right here. Uh, For those that came in late, uh, this is from futurism.com. And this was, let's just watch this real quick one more time, just a little clip of it. This was earlier today. Odd. It is. I'm feeling a temperature drop already, which I can't believe. It's feeling cooler. The crowd is starting to go oh, wild. Yeah. Okay. Did they say how many people were there viewing with them? No, but earlier today I saw where they were getting ready. They believed that it's just going to be tens of thousands. I don't know how many it was, yeah, but it was still. I, it, I was it, thinking it had to be in the tens of thousands. Yeah, it's just amazing. I'm glad that they were able to see it because they were calling for rain there. Now, we, we saw this today. You could possibly ask for in the background here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, we're so close. Somebody said they watched that. Okay, just a little bit. All right, watch this, y'all. This I want y'all to look for the diamond. So this is what amazing. they call the diamond. And we saw the diamond today. This is amazing. It's right at the very last. You'll see that flash of the diamond coming. It, it, here it comes. Boom. Totality. Amazing. Look how it just lightens up. Oh, it's gorgeous. Y'all, oh, it was amazing. amazing. It was amazing. Yes, it was. But I want to show you something that's really cool. This is from the International Space Station with the space. You're in space looking down at an eclipse. I mean, how many people in the history of humanity has ever had that shot? But watch this. Oh, and actually, we have the International Space Station flying that dark circle. right now. So they are actually seeing not one, but two views of the eclipse. They're able to see not just the moon passing in front of the sun, but they're also able to see the shadow of the moon passing over Earth, which is absolutely incredible. I mean, I can Look hardly imagine a view being better than the one we have right now. But if there is one, well, it's, it's yeah, probably on the space station. It's from yeah. the space station for sure. <laughs> that is wild. Wow. So, yeah. Yes, they're able to take some pictures of that, um, and that is just incredible. Man, I just wanted to show you all that because, so so as we reflect, Sandy, um, yeah, did anybody get the comment? I see what you're saying, Alicia. If you did see the comment, yes. the comment, uh, the devil comment, they call it, the dragon comment, whatever. What's the name of the actual name? Double, uh, it's uh, P12 Ponds Brooks. I, Pond, I knew you'd know it. She's just, she's a plethora <laughs> oh, of knowledge. Yes. Uh, Ponds what? Ponds Brooks. Ponds Brooks. So if you did see it, and some people are saying that they saw it, and, and if you had a telescope and you got a picture of that, you have got to send it to me. Now, several Please. of you have pictures. It, this has been crazy. I told you I would let you know. Go to 
or contact us on LarryRagon.com and, and send me a message that you have a picture that you'd like to send me. And uh, I'll give you my email and all that through the contact information site. And uh, we'll get that back to you. And it may be next couple of days, but I'm going to do a follow-up. And then when I do my Bible study on Wednesday night, I'm going to show some of the things because I got, I got, I got a word for the Bible study Wednesday night that's going to go along with what's happened today. But f- just reflect, Sandy, on today as we wind the show down, just what today meant to you and, and what did you feel when that happened? Well, it's just an awe-inspiring event. It's um, just a special moment in history. And it's one thing to, you know, see part of the eclipse. You really need to be in the area of totality, the path of totality, to experience what totality is. When you go from daylight to a weird, yeah, um, not complete darkness, but just it's strange. There's no way to describe it. It's not sunset. It's not the image, the feel that you get at sunset. It's different. It's different. It's a different thing. And, and even while it's moving towards totality, as you get in those moments and seconds before looking around, starting to see and feel the change. Right, exactly. And and you know, I'm I'm a I'm a preacher, okay? I'm a preacher. I'm not a news anchor, mm-hmm. okay? But I'm a preacher that just happens to tell news. So I, I look at things through a spiritual lens and just before it went to totality, I just started looking around at yeah. the hue. Yes. That that's just on it's just so strange. So different and so strange. And you just sort of felt like this this can't be just a crazy freak thing that happens in our solar system. That it just so happens that our sun is exactly, I mean exactly, exactly. 400 times larger than the moon. That they say that the moon, think about what they're, what they're trying to tell you without God. They're trying to tell you that some big bang happened and all this debris that <laughs> billions and trillions of years ago that just sprayed everywhere. Right. Some became planets, some became moons, some became comets, some became asteroids, but one big chunk became our moon. Mm-hmm. And that moon... And it just coincidentally, coincidentally became 400 times... 200. 200 times... Was 400, 400, 400 times yeah. smaller than the sun. Exactly. 400 times... The sun is 400 times farther away... And when just we, perfect. When we have these eclipse events, this is how it turns out. And this is, I mean, something, something I, I divine. Loved, I loved has watching to be. this morning when we were getting ready to leave. We were getting ready, and we had Fox News on, and uh, Bill Hemmer was on there. I love when he's talking to this NASA lady that mm-hmm. was on there, and he goes, he he brought that up. He's it's exactly four hundred times larger. And it's exactly 400 times away Mm -hmm. precisely. He said, if those two dynamics were not in place, we would not be able to have that. And I loved, I was so proud of him. He said, how can we not look at that and know that there must be some kind of creator? He asked that to to NASA because this could just not happen, right? And she goes, well, well, you know, uh, 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 what, you know, there's, there's, you know, you know, it's mathematical and things happen. Yeah, who worked that math out? <laughs> yeah, she just could. She she was. She no, decided. they're not going to give any uh, honor to God. No, you know, no, 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 no. no. But it's been an amazing day. Yeah, we are been. tired. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't make it quite, frankly, to two hours. Made it to an hour and a half. Uh, and people are asking about your legs, Sandy. Give them a oh. quick, quick update on where you're at because people want to know how to pray. Um, well, I feel like I'm getting better and stronger. And, um, it's still kind of slow. Recovery is a little slow, but they tell me that I'm progressing. So I'm going to take that as a good report. And I'm very thankful. I did. I don't, I think I said this last, last week that my goal was to move from the walker to the cane. And I have been using my cane. Um, since I'm in a little uncharted territory out here, I didn't want to get too brave or crazy. So I have been using my walker. Um, today to see the eclipse. But yes, I will be back on my cane when we return home. And I'm super excited about yeah, that. I'm so proud of you, babe. I mean, to, to go through what she's gone through and then make a six and a half hour drive out Ooh. here 
and then an hour and a half each way today. Let me just say, this. all the prayers that you guys have been doing for me, yeah. I was standing on those for the trip because um, it could have been tough and it wasn't super easy, but um, I definitely felt the strength of the prayers and I thank you for them. Please keep praying for me. And I want to say how proud I am for you being on the show tonight because it, I knew it was tough for you, but you did a great job. And, Again, prayers. <laughs> yeah, and I love you, and we all love you. And you know what, Sandy, I love you both, all of you. We all, we both love you. Today was so special seeing you all do, go through this oh, together with yes. us. We'll never forget we're it. We're so thankful for those of you who were live with us today. Absolutely. So we love you. We're going to get some rest. We'll be headed back to Birmingham tomorrow. Yes. We will be, don't forget, tomorrow night. Let's throw this up one more time. Tomorrow night, Right. go the, to the confessionals. Tonight yes. at midnight. Catch if, that show. If catch you want to listen podcast. to the audio, but if you want to watch the video interview tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. on the confessionals podcast with Tony Merkel, I am his guest. And he interviews me about the CERN connection. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think that it could have been more better timed. Right. Because right now, even as we speak, Amazing CERN timing. has just ignited. And let me add one more thing before we get off. Those of you who can go and see the movie So 